I put up this bird food, expecting to get some, some you know, my little flock of birds hanging around. Not one bird yet. And I'm even, even trying to tempt them with some live candle, live candle lights. This scenery doesn't really um, remind me a lot about when this season started. I was over there near the ocean. It was spring, the grass was green. And I was hunting this lawn close to an office building where I found some uh, Oscar the Fifth. And Håkon the seventh, five euro, I think. And uh, and then later in the season we started exploring the the forest that's just behind the building here. I wasn't sure how to make this movie. I'm definitely through with with. Uh, Kind of going through the kings in the chrono chronographically. I mean, you've had your lesson in kings, so I thought I was gonna go through the season like I remember it anyway. So here are some some of the finds. First thing that comes to mind is the forest that's over there. That gave me a lot of pleasure. Do you remember this one? That was one of the first coins I found in that area where we picked up all that, all those coins, but we didn't find any silvers, although we went there many times. 1876. 1876 Oscar. And then we found this Tora, Swedish one, 1890. Also Oscar. I didn't understand what king it was at the time. Now I have several. But I guess the highlight, the two highlights from that forest hunt was when we found this one. I went completely bananas. Oh my god, oh my god, I'm shaking, I'm shaking, I'm shaking. This gave a 40 and I think I have a new king. I think I have some kind of Carl, Christian, whatever. You know, and it's big as hell. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. And then this one showed up. A wheaty, a wheat scent. 1912. That forest gave us a lot of good times. Would you believe it? <laughs> okay, all American uh, um, subscribers. Now I know how it is to find the penny. Let's check if it's a wheat. <laughs> cool, huh? Yep, it's my first wheaty. And I think it's a... Uh, I think it's a 1912. And then I started taking my bike up in the forest. Remember? We went looking for a monastery. We found a monastery. And there I found my first silver. <laughs> I remember I was bicycling home, screaming like a child. First, one of them was cut in two, you know. And I, and I, I was saying something like, I found silver. I found my first silver. Uh, you know where I'm going and you know what I'm going to drink. And I think <laughs> you agree that I deserve it. We had some great time here in the forest, in rain, in pouring rain. Check him back in. You know, I've been bicycling up this road now for, I don't know, five times the last week. And this is the first time I'm able to do the whole four kilometers uphill with no brake, with no pit stops. So, you're all aware of that. Detectoring is not only about the treasure and the excitement and history and planning your own small adventures it's also about exercise and getting out in nature and I feel really good about this now yeah yeah Rambo but it's true I did have I did have some rough rides up there and I, I wouldn't be able to make movies under such conditions without this 
underwater camera and I had a lot of persistence. But that's the area where I found my first silvers. And this is the one that broke. But luckily I found another one that was whole. And that's going on the Christmas tree together with Abe and Christian the Seventh. So there you go, Oscar. You can hang there. And there you go, Christian. And lastly, our friend Abe. You can go up here. The first coins are on the tree. And by that time, summer had definitely arrived. And I got that mine lab, that Excalibur, but I wasn't really comfortable using it because I didn't know how. Until I met Per. I owe him a lot. Merry Christmas Per, I hope you're watching. That's a great guy. He taught me how to retrieve the targets by using the scoop in the right way. And it didn't take long until the gold and silver was pouring down. Man, this guy has his own clubhouse or something. This must be the right door. Oh, kind of big. Wow. Pen? Where is the guy? Hello. <laughs> there he is. Hi, Pen. Is it big in Norway? <laughs> <All right. laughs> nice to finally meet you. Yeah, the same. Yeah. So that marked the beginning of a lot of good water hunts with the scoop and the Excalibur. And the gold and the silver. Were plentiful. It also started a silver cleaning project, which I won't go into in detail. <laughs> Let's just say that we that we kind of researched that. So this goes on the tree. <laughs> kind of tacky, huh? To have <laughs> to have gold <coughs> hanging from your tree, but this is a tacky movie. Why not? And then we started scuba diving. That wasn't a great success. So I won't go further into that. But I've learned a lot from that though. And then we went to Hardanger. Up in the mountain. To find those, arrow, find those uh, old arrowheads. And I was kind of disappointed because I didn't find anything up there. But on my way home, I stopped at the field, and this one showed up. That was a great trip. We made it across the ridge, and now we're at the, at the side, at the western side, where this old road is supposed to go. We haven't found jack shit, and uh, PK, one of the more experienced guys, he had the intelligence to bring beer and he had the courtesy to share one with me so even though we haven't found anything come on you thank you you got one open yet cheers cheers you have to be pretty crazy to go up here and trying to find coins at least. 
but it's, it is it is beautiful highly motivated slightly drunk a lot of the guys in the groups in the group has found <laughs> has found coins in between those two buildings and I've been walking 12 hours and driven 200 kilometers and I haven't found jack shit so I'm gonna find myself a coin if I'm gonna die try I don't know two hours and then I finally find the coin it's the coin I hate the most it's the 10 crown who love and I've been everywhere. I've dug it. Bullets. Horse. Cumps. And now I've had it. It's not much more daylight left. What? Am I hallucinating? Did I eat those mushrooms yesterday? I have a hangover. My car is stuck in the field. I don't have proper tires. God damn it. It's August. So we managed to get the car out of the ditch with the help of uh, AAA or whatever they're called. And now we're gonna head down south and hopefully we will find a place to stop on the way and do a little hit and run hunting. Yes, 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 yes! Uh, I drive, on my way home, I saw this beautiful church and a beautiful house and I spoke to a very nice lady and I just asked her if I could uh, walk her field. First she thought I was from the military that I came to remove a live grenade that they have found. And I found a new coin that I've never found before. It's, I'm gonna go up uh, to her now and show it to her. And maybe she'll get uh, excited and let me continue. Wow, how cool is that? Cool! So that was PK on the top of the mountain there, bringing the oars. He's the president of the Norwegian Association of Metal Detectors and he's a great guy and I hope you're watching PK. Merry Christmas. This one is for you. We got seriously drunk <laughs> that day. That's the story about how I found my first Fredrik. And then I started walking fields, you know, because autumn came. I, t I said, ah, oh, I was never going to walk fields, boring and blah blah blah, but I realized that if you wanted to find the good stuff, or at least some of it, you have to go, you have to walk fields as well. It's part of the natural seasonal variation in this hobby. So we started to find a lot of covers, and eventually the silvers came as well. On this small little field, just parked the car, swung the coil for 30 seconds, and I found my best found ever. I'll show it to you. After I found it, I, I, I couldn't... I, I, my, the last thing on my mind was finding the camera. I started uh, hunting uh, near the woods. Um, I don't know the year. But it's 8 shillings silver. Christian the seventh, the father of Frederick the sixth. Yes! <laughs> when these things happen, I just rush, rush to the camera. Where did it go? <laughs> Shut up, you Frenchie. Where are you? It was on the surface. Yes, yes, yes. And now you're worth the money, huh? Now you're worth the money. Shut up! Ah. This is silver. <laughs> so cool. 73. Clean 73. What king is it? It looks like Oscar. Okay, I'll give it a gentle clean in water. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. <laughs> wow. Oh, you know this feeling? 
And it was indeed an Oscar, 1878. And this is the first coin, Christian the seventh, eight shilling. And more silvers came our way. Our first Frederick the the sixth silver, four shilling eighteen oh nine, and another Oscar. The so four silvers, and these are the farms that I've been sending these Christmas cards to, right? So, we got the Deus, we started walking fields, and we got silver. <sighs> I'm telling you, I'm not sure I'm, if I'm doing this next year. There you go, Christian. Find you a nice place. You can go there. Frederick. Oscar. Ah, there you go. And the last Oscar. I think you're gonna be there. We're making progress. And then, hungry for more silver, we heard that they were digging up some old fields over in Fredrikstad, turning them into golf courses and we wanted to catch them before they were done. And that was the start of a great adventure. <laughs> Wait, is that macro? Wait. Yeah, it was. I, I, I haven't checked it yet, but you gotta be shitting me. You don't want to give me a... You know, it's too light. You don't want to give me a silver coin, but you're going to give me a gold ring? <laughs> Stuck it in the grass? It looks shiny. I have to check for a mark. That's gold, all right. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Your Ivar 1988. If you want it, send me an email. If not, <laughs> I've struck gold. This place will give me anything but a silver coin. Huh? But thank you, Frederick. Sorry, I just ejaculated. No offense. Silver! <laughs> Silver! Silver, 10 euro, 1888, Oscar II. Oh. Yeah, they, they think I'm crazy, I know. <laughs> and as you know, it didn't stop there. We got a lot of silvers out of that place. That was the 10 euro we found. And then we moved down and we stayed in a hotel for a week, found a 2 shilling, Carl John. And then we found a 10 euro, 3 shilling, Oscar II. We found another Oscar II. And then we started finding cool relics, like this. The seal. And weight leads. This is 64 grams or 4 lod, which they used for trade. Because they, when they did trade, they had to know that they got what they paid for. So the kings issued these, these weights. This is a pharmaceutical weight used by pharmacists to make sure that the people got what they paid for. This is also a weight lead, oxidized, 
with a hole so you can put uh, a thread inside same goes with this we had a great time down in Fredrikstad and that's also <laughs> where we hooked up with Mr. Mine Lab dog hope you're watching thanks for all your all your good equipment and all your good advice this one goes out for you and Mr. Mine Lab pulled it off in this Vietnam War swamp he found silver I must say my self-esteem is getting a bit Oscar second well it's oh, not yeah, it's not a beauty I'll check the date it's a fucking crap coin oh see it's it's actually dissolving as I touch it that awful soon but it's silver that's for sure where, where is my Prozac? I just left this area. Don't kill yourself. <laughs> Look at that beauty. 24 shilling. <laughs> Let's have another look at that silver 24 shilling that Mr. Mine Lab got. 1846. Mr. Mine Lab? Yes! Thanks for Thanks joining for me. Thanks for enjoyable evening. Yeah, it was a nice day. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And, and thanks for the new coil. So no doubt, the trip to Fredrikstad was a great success. And here are some of the finds on the tree. There's your two shilling. There's one of the Oscars. Ah, there's the lead seal and I can't remember where I put the other coins at the moment <clears throat> it's getting harder and harder to do this <clears throat> and then something happened that changed my perception of detecting altogether the 705 and the Excalibur is very good for its purposes but Severin the guy who deals the XP and the fissures and other detectors he was kind enough to borrow me his personal Deus and I got I was a bit skeptical in the beginning but I got completely hooked that is one fantastic detector Severin if you're watching this one goes out for you he's a very busy guy so I haven't been able to hunt for him that much but He's the guy who inspired me, together with Chris, to go to the Czech Republic where we found a lot of silvers and we had a lot of great beer and good food and we met up with Ed, the American from um, <laughs> Virginia. Ed, if you're watching, this goes out for you and you too, Chris. Ole Christian. Thanks for a nice trip. We're going back to find more. Let's have a look at the finds. So we got all these different coins and we, we more or less have the same problem as in Norway with regards to the coppers. But this is a one Kreutzer from the 1800s. This is from the 1700s. It's, I, maybe I can try to treat it more. And these are from the early 1900s. And they are probably bronze because they keep better. And that's the Kreutzers. And then the silvers. My god. This is a Kreutzer. This is a Kreutzer. But the really nice one. And here we have some small hammers. Which is impossible to identify. But you can bet that they are 500 years old at least and then we got the Leopold and then the most beautiful of them all the Rudolf the Habsburger Mali Grosch 1586 minced by uh, Hoffman Pavel Hoffman 
You see that lion? It's a lion with a twin tail. It's a hammered silver coin, 500 years old. The feeling of finding it is extreme. And then this pendant, or whatever it is, we don't know. And this griddle hook, it's old. Some more modern stuff, First World War, First World War. That was a great trip. And the Deus was extremely good at detecting these because it operates on 18 uh, kilohertz. And then all the buttons we found this year. I don't know where to start. This is a Norwegian or Swedish army button with the lion. This is the third regiment. I've got them all. Uh, this is the second regiment, smaller button. We got the first regiment. We got different varieties of the lion. We've got the 1700s, that's where they started to, to, to decorate it. We have buckles. Have a look at this buckle. Someone tells me this is a dolphin buckle. I mean, then we're talking two, three, four, five hundred years after Christ. Other buckles. Bottle opener. I like that one. That's from the forest behind my flat. It's a nice one as well. Musket balls. A lot. Lead seals, a lot. The best one, probably this one from 1784. Someone told me it was Russian, I don't know. These guys, these are uh, old bricks for playing with. Old game, like when you play chess or Monopoly or whatever. This is what they used to play with. And finally, the coin I just showed you, the Frederick, which I bought from the clad. And we got some more stuff here. I'm sorry, I can't take you through it all. A silver spoon, which I found with Frederick the Fireman, 1913. We have a lot. It's been a great year. I'm gonna put some up on the tree and I'm gonna light up the tree for you and then we're gonna call it the night <laughs> because I'm actually I'm not capable of doing this anymore. <laughs> this is a button from the railroads, railroad guys. A lot of old buttons. Some of them are in good condition, some of them are not. This is all Oscar II, one or two or one of them is from 1885. Very rare year. This is for bulls, they put it on the horn on the bulls to keep them from uh, <laughs> getting too angry. This is a, a kettle foot where the kettle was over live fire. A watch, junk jewelry, silver, gold. You name it. Let's put it on the tree. So we are closing in on this Christmas special from Digging Norway. It's time to light up the tree. This is old stuff, huh? Let's have a look at the vines.
There's so many of them, I don't know where to film at the moment. And here's the star of the show. My tent plugs turn into a beautiful star at the top. Thanks for following me. Thanks for following this uh, Christmas special. There's only one thing left to say. To all my subscribers and viewers, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Thank you for watching. I'll be back next year with more finds, more adventures and more detecting and more bear. I hope you have a really good Christmas. No matter how you do it, one thing, Christmas spirit doesn't come automatically. You have to create it for yourself in your own way. Christmas is a paradox because for some it's a, it's, it's a beautiful uh, A4 uh, Disneyland uh, time. For others it's very tough because they get confronted with what they were supposed to have and they don't have. Nobody, nobody is like on television. But you can enjoy this holiday if you take responsibility of your own Christmas spirit. Light the candle, make some food, get some beer, invite some friends, make the best of it. And have a nice, very nice Christmas. And I'll see you next year.